Let's think about things that can cause pain and painful conditions that you're going to come across in your daily clinical practice. Now, an obvious cause of pain is inflammation. Inflammation is going to cause pain whether the inflammation has a chemical cause, a thermal cause, whether it's caused by radiation, whether it's caused by an immunological reaction, or what you might see most frequently is caused by infection. So inflammation is going to release inflammatory mediators into the tissues. That's going to sensitize the nociceptors. It's going to lower the depolarization threshold of the nociceptors. There's going to be hyperalgesia and there's going to be pain. So very often, if a wound isn't painful, it's not infected. It's not an absolute rule, but if a wound does become painful, consider infection. Not that it's the infection itself that's causing the pain, it's the inflammation. So inflammatory conditions are very often painful conditions. The next one probably to mention is oxygen deficiency and ischemia. Now, if there is ischemia to any tissue of the body, that's going to reduce the amount of oxygen that's getting through to that part of the body. That's likely to mean that the metabolism in that area is going to change from aerobic to anaerobic. And with anaerobic metabolism, we're going to get the production of lactic acid and there's going to be free hydrogen ions in the tissue. And these hydrogen ions stimulate the nociceptors and cause pain. So any hypoperfusion or ischemia can lead to oxygen deficiency, localized hypoxia, localized acidic formation, hydrogen ions and lactic acid in the area. There's going to be a lack of oxygen, hypoxia, anaerobic metabolism. And this is what causes cramp. This is what can cause cramp in a muscle. Or a classic pain that's caused by ischemia, of course, is myocardial ischemia, giving rise to angina pectoris. Or there could be ischemia in a wound, resulting in more wound pain. This is often why arterial ulcers are more painful than venous ulcers, because there's an ischemic component as well as the wound itself. So inflammation, oxygen deficiency and ischemia. And kind of tied in with the oxygen deficiency and ischemia, but we can include this as a separate category, we could talk about spasms and colic. Now what does the word colic actually mean? Well colic actually means pain in a hollow organ. Pain in a hollow organ. So you might have come across patients with renal ureteric colic or biliary colic or indeed you might have come across people with labour pains that, that's actually a spasm and a colic so what's happening here is that the hollow there's a hollow organ with muscular walls and the muscles go into spasm there's a spasm of the muscles for example if this is biliary or ureteric colic there'll be some calculi inside that the muscles the muscle wall of the ureter or the bile ducts can't squeeze down so they go into spasm to try and get it down and if the muscle goes into spasm that's going to increase the workload of the muscle so the muscle is going to be working harder it will increase the oxygen demand of that muscle making anaerobic metabolism more likely but at the same time if you think that that's a muscle spasming then there has to be blood vessels in this case represented by my fingers there has to be blood vessels going through that muscle to perfuse that muscle. And if the muscles go into spasm, I'm now squashing my fingers. It squeezes your fingers. So the muscle going into spasm is squeezing shut the blood vessels that go through that muscle, further reducing its blood supply, making it ischemic. So in the spasm, the very time the muscle needs more oxygen, it's getting less oxygen because it's spasming down on its own blood supply. So colic, spasms, renal colic and biliary colic are two of the worst common pains that we see on medical wards actually. These are agonizing conditions. So treat these patients very sympathetically and treat the pain very aggressively. 
Now another source of pain is serous membranes. So as you know round about the lungs we've got the parietal and visceral pleural membranes. Round about the abdomen we've got the peritoneal membranes. And the parietal membranes, particularly the ones on the outside, are very sensitive to pain. So the parietal pleural membrane is very sensitive to pain and the parietal peritoneal membrane is very sensitive to pain. This is what hurts if we get cut, stabbed in the stomach or if patients get chest drains, it's absolute agony for them because it's going through the parietal pleural membrane. And the visceral peritoneal membrane in the abdomen is also sensitive, but that's more sensitive to stretching. So for example, if someone's got a distension, they can get pain, largely generated by the visceral peritoneal membrane. In peritonitis, a lot of the pain comes from the parietal peritoneal membrane. If it's inflamed, it causes a lot of pain. Patients won't like you to press it, and if you press hard, or just press progressively, but then let go quickly, that causes extreme rebound pain, indicating inflammation of the, uh, the peritoneal membranes. Also, the dura mater is very sensitive to, uh, to pain as well. The dura going around about the head, round about the spinal cord. So it's postulated that quite a few headaches could originate from the dura mater. The stiff, painful neck in meningitis probably comes from pain from the, uh, the dura. And indeed, people are now thinking that a lot of back pain could be dural in origin because the dura mater goes down through the, um, down, down through the vertebral column surrounding the spinal cord and the large nerves and uh, this could be the source of quite a lot of back pain actually. Right, dermis we know about, the skin in two layers, the epidermis and the dermis, the dermis being rich in nociceptors. Muscles are also very rich in nociceptors. So muscle injury also associated with a lot of pain. So patients after trauma can have muscle injury without broken bones but still be in really quite a lot of pain. So just because someone hasn't got a fracture doesn't mean to say the pain can necessarily be less because muscles can generate a lot of pain. And also in this trauma situation, we think about joint capsules. Now the joint capsule goes between two 